Hey guys, we're looking at some Warrior 2v2 matchup statistics. We've got a couple of comps here, which has been pulled by Ludus Labs, uh, Dr. Gibbs, um, which I've plugged before in the State of the Arena commentary, so check out his stuff. I've linked it here. So to explain what is in front of us right now, uh, there's a couple of matchups. Obviously, there's some matchups which aren't included. We couldn't include all of them, but these are kind of the ones I think that are interesting to talk about. Uh, so to break it down for you on the left hand side, we have the estimated rating advantage with the MMR system. If you have equal MMR, you have a 50, 50 win rate. If you're hundred points above them, uh, you have a 64% chance to win. So to give you a quick example for something like rogue disc, which we see on the left, um, warrior priest that's at 2k is at a 50, 50 win rate. Um, of beating roughly like a 2120 rogue disc, right? And you probably see a lot of this in how you play as well. Uh, you, you'll feel it out too. Uh, and then obviously the inverse as well. So if you're versing um, Windwalker Arsham over here as Warrior Disc Priest, uh, you will likely be at 50 50 win rate against a, warrior, a, a Windwalker Arsham that is roughly 100 points lower than you. So obviously this shows that, you know, you're, you're quote unquote being counted by that comp. So let's, let's break them down. I wanted to go through each one today and, and kind of talk about them. So the first one here is um, like the rogue matchups. Uh, we have rogue mage, which is historically very hard comp for a lot of people to get their hands on. Um, by the way, just one thing to note, if you see the grayed out bars, it means there's not enough data there to really make an assessment. Um, it could, it's, it's essentially, we can't use that to, to really, I guess, put any opinion forward. Cause it's just all error. It's all noise. Well, it could be noise. So, um, you know, ignore the gray bars. If, if you don't see your matchup on there, it probably just means there's not enough data to, to go forward. Um, so HPAL and Arsham, you know, they're pretty considerably like, they're not hugely above um, the 50-50, but I feel like when I play HPL and Arsham into Rogue Mage, it does feel kind of difficult, but you can sort of eke out a win if you peel and live long enough. Um, against Druid, you can completely understand why Druid's, Druid's pretty low there, because I feel like the, the big swaps onto the Druid when he has like no hots or is caught out of form... Um, does mean he's su super susceptible to dying, especially if the mage is klepto, the rogue's consistent resets, uh, and just how punishing it is. So, so I don't think there's anything, you know, too out of the ordinary there. I feel like warrior healer is generally pretty strong into rogue disc, um, apart from the resto druid. And I imagine the disc priest would be about 50, 50 as well, uh, against rogue disc, right? So rogue disc. I think every single warrior comp has a pretty considerable advantage. The interesting thing here is warrior disc having a almost 110, 120 point advantage over a rogue disc. I would have actually thought the HPAL variant would be higher. Uh, but I guess when you think, when you break it down, um, the, the priests can, can do a lot of, can give you a lot of defensives like barrier. Um, he can be offensive on the rogue too. He can counter fear if the, if he's like if the rogue priest runs on top of your priest. Um, if you're like bannering it, he can fear back really quickly. Um, you know he's got dome for the bomb. I think he can radiance when you're dueled. So he can counter a lot of the abilities here. And in a lot of the comps where disc is having a huge like problem, uh, where mana becomes an issue, um, you know you're versing another disc priest, and presumably warriors are going to do more damage than the sub rogue unless something's going really really wrong. So you're going to outminer them while also having the exact same defensive toolkit. I think that one makes sense. I would have thought HPAL would be higher than Arsham, uh, but, you know, I feel like a lot of the HPAL defensives also mean that the HPAL is sort of at risk for a swap. So something like um, if the HPAL bops himself on a blind and it gets dispelled, the rogue can swap and the HPAL can't bubble. Um, if the, uh, I guess... Priest is spamming Dispel on the Divine Favors and the Rogue's getting 100% uptime. They can kind of close that game out quickly. The HBL sacks, then he can swap to them, all this kind of stuff. I think the Druid one makes sense. Um, a lot of purges, a lot of control, a lot of the same issues that I feel like Druids always have into Rogues. Um, but you still have that Warrior, so you have a higher chance of winning. Um, the Warrior SP, uh, sorry, Rogue SP 
I mean, this big gap makes sense. Like, Pallies can just trade really quickly, and the SP only has, like, I would probably say 40 or 40 seconds or a minute to live unless it's peeled really, really well. So um, I can imagine this isn't too much of a popular comp. I do see this a fair bit, but definitely, definitely not that often. Um, this one, when we move to the Windwalker teams, is very interesting. Uh, so against, um, if we look here, uh, Disc Priest, Windwalker, pretty much the, the other three comps are a noise, but it does seem to destroy Disc Priest. And I think this makes sense because when I play my Windwalker and you versus Disc Priest, uh, you can kind of peel, but you can play so aggressive on them and you have so many mini micro goes that the Priest still needs to react to. So this makes, this is like really interesting. I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm going to zoom out again. Um, just so you guys can see the scale there too. And th this is really, this is something that I feel the other teams, if we had more data, would actually have an advantage against uh, Disc Priest Windwalker because you can kind of oom them. Uh, but when you do have a Disciplined Priest as well, uh, I feel like the Windwalker can can get an easy, huge go on the Disc Priest every sort of um, two minutes. And then these micro sh uh, Storm of Fires. HP Windwalker seems to be thrashing warriors. Uh, we don't have the the data for the mirror, but you know against all these other three healers, I think HP Windwalker would make sense. I think it would beat Disc Priest more often because HP can bop the Windwalker, essentially making him unpeelable for periods of time. Um, against Resto Druids, I think you can kind of outlast them and just swap, uh, especially because HP can just run in and hodge the Druid when he's not expecting it. Um, with Arshams, I feel like the same thing. You know, you get set up on and the HP can keep the Windwalker alive long enough that he's going to get two Zuens and pretty much finish off your Arsham. So that's interesting. Um, with the with the Windwalker Arsham, obviously I think it does stomp Disc Priest. Like the Purge, the Kick, alongside the big damage from the Windwalker, you're going to have a really easy time against Disc Priest. I don't imagine it's too much harder for the other ones, but I don't see too many Arsham Windwalkers out there regardless. So looking at the other comps here, um, we have Disc Priest Feral. Uh, so we don't have data for anything except the HPAL variant. Uh, and I suppose that kind of makes some sense there. I feel like HPALs have Bop, which can kind of remove a lot of, like even if it gets dispelled, it removes a lot of the Feral's dots. Um, and you can just put the Disc Priest, like the Disc Priest is on a really short timer because you're both able to do so much damage. Um, I do think it'd probably be about, even though we don't have this data right now, um, 50, 50, uh, or, you know, maybe it has a slight advantage against, uh, other Disc Priests, um, and Resto Druids against Arshams. I think it's very close. I think the Arsham can put a lot of pressure on the Disc Priest while able to stop a lot of the Ferals goes as well. Um, so, you know, not as strong as HBL, but that, that sort of makes sense. Uh, if we look here, we have Disc Priest Ret. Uh, Disc Priest Ret, I think, stomps HBLs and Resto Shams. That makes a, a lot of sense. Um, they're just really susceptible to these big goes. And, you know, it's very hard for you to close the game out and oom that Disc Priest before the Ret can cycle his second wings and finish them off. Uh, interesting that Priest does so well. I imagine that's because when you have a Priest on your team, you can kind of be super, super aggressive. You know, if he PSs, uh, you, can, uh, you can trade PS when you're hodged, all these kinds of things, whereas the Paladin kind of has to bubble instantly. Um, but the Disc Priest could pre-dome the wings. He can PS after that. And because he's versing another Disc Priest, your mana is probably going to be pretty equal too. So, you, you know, you really get gas pedal there. This, I think, is a, is a crazy one. Disc Priest, uh, Arms Warrior Disc Priest gets pretty much completely countered, um, if you consider the, like the scale of the rest of them, by the, uh, the Resto Druid Warrior. This makes a, a, like a lot of sense to me, because what I tend to see Resto Druid Warrior do is the Resto Druid will sit 500 yards away, um, hot the Warrior, and then run away, and then just keep doing that. Thorns a warrior and the disc priest is under a lot of pressure because warriors are pretty good at killing disc priests so he can't really spam purge he doesn't have the globals and the time to uh i think obviously the data here is is miss is like not not significant enough where you're going to see a big difference there i feel like 
uh, it does make sense that the Resto Druid Warrior actually does do really well into Warrior Disc. A lot of the offensive pressure that you want, the ability to get fears is pretty much cancelled out by a good Druid just kiting the whole time. Um, but I do think this is one that would probably go over a lot of people's heads as, as a big counter like that. For the other ones, Warrior Arsham, um, H powers do quite good into it. The rest we don't have info for. Uh, I think that makes sense. Like, H powers are just generally a better healer so far. Maybe this will shift eventually. Um, but a lot of the times I feel like with an Arsham, I'm missing something um, when I'm versing a H power. You, you don't have your bops. Um, while you do have purge and, and kick and shear and stuff like that, you don't have like an instant stun that you can put onto the healer and do a big swap to. And uh, I feel like for a lot of warriors, it's probably easier to kill an Arsham when you have Hodge and HPAL damage than it is to, to kill a HPAL with Arsham damage because you don't have that Hodge. When we look at Warrior HPAL, um, there's no data except that it counters Arsham. I do imagine it would, like, that Warrior Druid would have a slight advantage in this comp, similar to why it beats Warrior Disc. I think a good Druid can stand really far away, just apply Thorns, they've got no Dispels. The Warrior has to sort of make a call whether to run away and leap out and try and get to the Druid. And if he doesn't, he's just, you know, wasted a whole bunch of time, his mobility... Um, while the HPAL is getting wailed on. When the warrior goes back to the HPAL, the warrior cleaves both. Now, what I think is interesting here is his big counter, the, the counter of uh, Frost DK HPAL um, versus uh, HPAL Warrior Arsham Warrior. I think this is one that I've been feeling for a while. I didn't really know if that's because I've been playing it wrong, but when I verse a Frost DK HPAL, it feels very difficult. Uh, mainly because a Frost DK can peel you really well. The HP power can freedom himself, so his his effective speed, even without Steed, is really high. Um, while you can do a big go onto the D DK, you're sort of on the same timer, because eventually you run out of slows and stops for his chill streak uh, dragon go. So very interesting on this one. I think with some more data, I think it would pretty much counter everything. Maybe Druids could kind of get away with it if they can play really well and, and super far away. Um, but this one is, this one's really, like, especially with Arsham, it makes sense because the Arsham's kind of stuck there. If he gets hodged and the and the DK does his big go, the h power can trade cooldown, so you can probably, like, you know, force something from their h power as soon as possible. But, yeah, definitely something to look at. So guys, um, that's the breakdown of the, the current kind of counters and what we counter. Uh, hopefully this was something interesting. If you, if you kind of want to see more of these, let me know. Please support uh, Gibbs out. Uh, he's doing all of this sort of for the community and it's really cool to see. So go check out what he's publishing um, on Ludus Labs. And if you see it on Reddit, give him an upvote. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys uh, appreciate it. Like that, this t this stuff takes a lot of work for him to do. So, you know, show some support there. Uh, overall, hope you guys enjoyed this vid, and I will see you tomorrow. Take it easy.